Okay, hi students. We're going to talk about lesson 6-1, which is over perpendicular bisectors. So first thing we do is define a perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector is a line, a segment, or array that passes through the midpoint of a segment and is perpendicular to that segment, and it goes through a segment. So what we have to start with is we have to start with the idea of a segment, and then perpendicular bisector means that we're going to have something that looks like this, and this can be a line, array, a segment, whatever, um, and what you know then is you know that you have a right angle right there, and you know that these two pieces are congruent. So you're going to be able to solve with just that information by knowing that those two segments um, that are formed there are congruent to each other, equal to each other, and you can set the angles equal to 90. So anything you know about the angle equal to 90. Okay, so then we go into perpendicular bisector theorem. So the theorem we're not going to use for proofs. We're going to use this to solve problems. But it says, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So I'm actually going to use this diagram up here to do it. I have a perpendicular bisector of a segment, and I'm going to draw a point on that perpendicular bisector. So there's a random point. There's my if. Okay. Then what it says is that I know that it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So it's telling me that the distance from this point to that endpoint is equal to the distance from this point to that endpoint. No matter where I put that point, that is what is true. That's my then that's there. Okay, so that's what's drawn in this diagram. You can see those pieces that are there um, and what you know, but I think it's easier to see it um, actually happen, um, the different pieces, but that's what we know here. So what I could identify here is that this is, in fact, a perpendicular bisector of AB. C is a point that's on um, that perpendicular bisector, so therefore it is equidistant from the two endpoints. Um, and we could solve with that. The converse of this is also true. So what this says is that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector. So if you have a segment, um, a random segment there, and you have a random point that you know that that point is equidistant from the endpoints, then you know that if you were to draw the perpendicular bisector of that segment, it would actually be on that. So you know that that um, exists there. That's the if then. Um, that's actually a good example of if you look at that picture of an isosceles triangle and understanding that in every isosceles triangle, if you draw a point from the vertex down, it's going to touch the midpoint and it's going to also be a perpendicular to that. Okay, so that's what we know from there. Okay, so using that on the checks that are in there. So what we see here is we see we have a segment QT and we have a perpendicular segment to it that also bisects it. So SR is the perpendicular bisector. Then what we know is that the point R that is on it is equidistant from the two endpoints. So these two are the same. So for this problem, we are setting up 2x plus 3 that is equal to 4x minus 7, and we're solving for that. So if I subtract 2x, I get 2x here. I add 7, I get 10 over here. Divide by 2, I'm going to get x equal to 5. And we want to solve for RT, which is over here. So then I do 4 times 5, which is 20, minus 7, which is 13. So we get 13 for our RT. Okay. <clears throat> if we look at the other check, what I see here is I see a um, line that is perpendicular. does not say it's a bisector, but I do know that X... Um, that is up here is equidistant from the endpoints of this segment that's down here. So if x is equidistant from the endpoints, because those are both 9, then it does mean that x is on the perpendicular bisector. So here you can see the perpendicular. You know that these two then are congruent, and if this is 3, then wy is also 3. Um, a lot of this will come down to common sense, but you have to be careful because sometimes there's um, things that are in there that try to stump you. Okay, so in your homework, if you flip to the homework page, okay, you can pause the video and solve number two here, okay, but my question is not just what is the answer, but it's the why, okay, so look at number two, pause the video, and then come back to this. So if you've paused and you've come back to it, here's what we have. So what I see here is I see that XZ is the perpendicular bisector of WY, okay, why? Because I have got the perpendicular and I've got the two five. Um, fives that are there. So if we have a perpendicular bisector, then any point on the perpendicular bisector, which is x here, is equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. So these two are equal to each other. So xw is 7.5 units long, and the y is because of what I just explained there. Because if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant from the endpoints. Okay, so that's the idea of what we have there. Okay, so the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. So we lead from perpendicular bisectors to the points of concurrency. So when three or more lines connect, 
in, um, intersect at a common point, the lines are called concurrent lines. The point of intersection of concurrent lines is called the point of concurrency. So this is the general topic of what we're doing in this unit. Okay, this is essentially module six right there is points of concurrency that we're building toward. So a triangle has three sides, so it is also has three perpendicular bisectors. These bisectors are concurrent lines. The point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle is called the circumcenter of the triangle. So we have to be able to connect the idea that if you connect the three perpendicular bisectors, it forms the circumcenter. And what do we know? Well, the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point called the circumcenter. And what we know about this is that it is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So this picture, if we can imagine this, is that if I have some random triangle here, we'll draw it like that, then I know that I can draw the three perpendicular bisectors. So I can bisect this side and make it perpendicular. I can bisect this side and make it perpendicular. And then I can do the same thing on this side if I try to find the middle somewhere in here. It's hard to do the last one. But it's going to look like this, and we're going to have one, two, three, one, two, three, and a right angle. So those are my three perpendicular bisectors. So if we go through this idea, there's my three perpendicular bisectors. They intersect at a single point, and that point right there is called my circumcenter. And what I know about that point is that that is the same distance to all the vertices. So if I were to draw in this segment here, and this segment here, and this segment here, those are all congruent to each other. Those three segments are all equal to each other. They're equidistant from the vertices. Okay, So that's all the stuff we have to know. So find SV if S is the circumcenter. So when we're given S as a circumcenter, I want to think of a few things. I want to think perpendicular bisectors here. Um, because those are going to give me something. Um, and I also want to think equal from the vertices. Okay, so I know that these are all congruent to each other. So if I'm looking at this SV, okay, so not um, going to be that. But if we have that, I know that if this is 4.25, this is 4.25, and this is 4.25. Okay, so I have those equidistant there. Um, it also tells me what QR is. And I know that since this is a perpendicular bisector, so it's going from um, the midpoint that's here. Yeah, because it's perpendicular bisectors, and it's going to that circumcenter that's there. Then this is a perpendicular bisector, so these two are congruent. So I can take the 7.79, um, and I can divide by 2. Let me get that real quick here. Um, so 3.895. Um, and I'm trying to find SV. So the next thing I'm going to look at here is that idea of, and we have to bring everything into it, is I actually have a right triangle here that I can do Pythagorean theorem with. So with that Pythagorean theorem um, thought here, I can do x squared, so that's going to be my SV, um, plus 3.895 squared is equal to 4.25. Um, squared is what I can solve. So if I do that 3.89 5 squared, um, it's going to give me 15.171025. Um, 4.25 squared is going to give me 18.0625. Subtract that. So you're going to get, we subtract, um, we're going to get about 2.891475. And then we're going to take a square root of that. Um, find my square root button. There we go. And that's going to give me that x is equal to, show this, um, 1.700433. It's going to keep going. It says round to the nearest tenth, so we have that 1.7 that's there. And x, remember, for me was representing SV, so that is my answer there. Okay, so it's 1.7 units long. Um, so know that Pythagorean theorem may come into play with some of these problems. Again, turn to the homework question number eight, try this one out, and then come back to this video. So you can pause this video right now. Okay, so if you've tried this one out, it says find FL. So we need to find FL. I'm going to go ahead and just mark that as an X. Um, if H is the circumcenter, so I know H is the circumcenter, that means that all of these are congruent. That's usually the first thing I go to. It also means that these perpendiculars that are drawn from that are perpendicular bisectors. So I know that these two are congruent. I can mark the other ones, but I don't think they're going to come into play. 
Um, it tells me EH is 5.06, so I know that's 5.06. I also know that side and so on. Um, I don't think that's going to come into play, and it tells me LH is 2.74. So again, I'm going to have a Pythagorean theorem problem come up here. If I look at the triangle, I can look at this triangle here that I'm trying to solve for X. Um, I do know that 2.74 that's there. Um, I also know that this is 5.06. And so I can solve with that. So I can solve x squared um, plus 2.74 squared equal to 5.06 squared. Um, and I can solve that um, within this problem here. Let's see if we can do this. Um, so 2.74 squared is going to give me a 7.5076. 5.06 squared um, gives me 25.6036. And if I subtract one from the other, let's subtract the 7.51, then that's going to give me x squared is equal to 18.096, and I take a square root of that, and I'm going to get x is equal to 4.25394, and it says in the earth's hundredth, so two decimal places, so I'm going to say that um, my answer here, fl, is equal to 4.25 um, units, okay, so that's what we would um, end up with that one. Okay, sometimes you can graph the lines to find the answers to these questions. So here's my check on this one. Lana wants to install a skylight in her bedroom. The section of roof where she plans to install the skylight um, has an incline and is triangular. So we've got that um, triangular incline that's there. The vertices of the roof are at x um, at 2, 1. So you can see x down here. Um, y at 7, 10. Y is up there. And Z is at um, 12, 1. Where should the center of the skylight be located so it is equidistant from the vertices of the roof? Um, if necessary, round your answer to the nearest whole number. So we want equidistant from each one of these vertices that are here. Um, and that means that we want to find the circumcenter, which is made by the perpendicular bisectors. So if I take a perpendicular bisector, I'm going to do the easiest side, which is down here first. So this is, we were at 12 and 2, so it's 10 units long, so 5 units across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is my midpoint, and perpendicular would be along here. So the perpendicular bisector is going to be on um, that, or the Circumcenter is going to be on that perpendicular bisector there. And then if I do a perpendicular bisector of this side, so here we have a slope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 up and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over. So we have a slope of 9 fifths. So I need to reverse that slope and find the midpoint. So let's see. Um, if we're at 2, 1 here and y is at 7, 10, the middle of those, so 2 and 7, um, is going to be 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So we would go to 4.5. So it would be right in here would be the midpoint. And then we would have to reverse that slope that is there. So if the slope is 9 fifths, the slope that's perpendicular then would be negative 5 ninths. So from this point, I would want to count negative 5 ninths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going in the middle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'd have to come over here, and then we could connect those two. I want to go kind of straight, so I'm going to use one of these lines um, to connect there to here. Um, and that should find my middle point in here. Um, it does say if necessary around to the nearest whole number, so... Um, I could draw that in and, and get pretty close um, to what that point is, but we may be able to graph in order to do that. It looks like in this one that wouldn't work. And so the other um, piece of this puzzle is other times you'll have to solve for the intersection of the two lines. Okay, And we are going to cover that solving later. So sometimes the graphing is going to work and you're going to be able to find the middle of those um, and what that point is just by graphing like I just did there. Um, and sometimes you're going to have to actually solve for that, and we will get to that um, a little bit later. So you've got your homework that you can work on um, with that, and that is it for today.